Um, good afternoon. We're going to um, uh, return now from recess um, and our um, uh, agenda for this afternoon continues the one from uh, this morning. I mentioned that we were, uh, have a presentation from uh, Senator uh, Gustafson on the uh, activities and discussions and so forth that um, she and members, um, uh, other members of the Senate, including Senator Latz, um, and then from the, um, from the House, um, at least uh, Representative Fraser. I don't know who else uh, that your conversations have been with. Um, and we have handed out and made available the uh, results of their discussions and their um, suggestions for uh, including um, this provision when we get to the money items, uh, we will already have had a presentation on uh, on the uh, public sub uh, subsidy aid. So, welcome to the Tax Conference Committee, uh, Senator uh, Gustafson. We admire your work and and uh, uh, look forward to your presentation. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you everyone for hearing the presentation today. Um, yes, I do want to begin by saying thank you to the Senate members um, who have helped me with this, including Senator Latz, Senator Umu Verbaten, Senator Mohammed, um, and then of course to Representative Cedric Frazier, who was instrumental in um, a lot of these definitions and the provisions. So um, this is uh, something that has had a lot of um, eyes on it. Uh, also to Representative Moeller as well, who took a look at this as, uh, from Judiciary. So um, very thankful for their input. Um, we've also consulted with the BCA, the commissioner and the governor's office to make sure that all parties were in agreement to the purpose of what this bill would achieve. Um, so I'm happy to walk through some of the, uh, uh, the highlights of what this would do. So this bill provides $300 million in fiscal year 24 to uh, townships that are over a certain size, cities, counties, and tribal governments for public safety purposes. The commissioner must uh, certify each entity amount to be paid by August 1st. Um, payments uh, must be used to provide public safety as defined as a county, tribal government, or local unit must use the aid under this section to provide public safety, including but not limited to community violence prevention, intervention programs, community engagement, mental health crisis responses, uh, victim services, training programs, first responder wellness, um, or to pay other personnel or equipment costs. Proceeds may not be used for employer contributions to the public employees police and fire fund if the entity received police state aid in the year immediately prior or any costs associated with alleged wrongdoing or misconduct. Also may not be used for the purchase of an armored or tactical vehicle and may not be used for construction, reconstruction, remodeling, expansion, improvement of a police station, including related facilities. Um, the formula is broken down here. I don't know that it would be beneficial for me to go through math with everyone. So actually, we'll just say that 70% uh, of this Gustafson, amount. Will, um, yes. Actually, uh, that is the kind of information we are, um, we would like to have. So uh, okay. uh, describe the formula. It's not my strong suit, but I'm so happy to do it for you. Yes, <laughs> good. I, I thought you would be. Please <laughs> Thank you, me. Madam Chair. Um, so um, the amount is divided by the total population of every city in Minnesota, and that's going to be city aid, uh, city's population times the city per capita aid amount. That is where um, uh, a bit, the 210 million will go into. Of the 90 million left over, it's a county basic per capita aid. It's 70 percent of the amount divided by the sum of the total population of every county plus tribal population estimated to be around $10.90 per. Um, and, and earlier, that's for, uh, 43 76 per. Um, county additional per capita aid amount is 30% of this amount divided by the sum total population of every county and tribal population, excluding the total population of every city. <laughs> that's estimated to be about $27.49. So you can see the breakdowns there as well on your one sheet. Um, and that would conclude the math portion, if you have uh, questions. Sen um, <laughs> Senator Augustuson, the, um we had a, an initial proposal that came from the uh, 
uh, the governor that um, I think both bodies um, uh, thought could have a lot of improvement to it um, mm -hmm. because there seemed to be holes in it in terms of, of uh, <clears throat> uh, covering that every single person in the state would have some sort of stake in uh, in that uh, proposal, and and that uh, didn't occur there. What what were the principles that uh, were in the governor's proposal that your proposal then uh, improved on? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I agree with you. People in Minnesota, no matter what zip code or community they live in, want to feel safe, and public safety can mean lots of different things based on what that community needs. So we wanted to take a look at it from that approach. Um, the governor's proposal um, had a lot of good things in it, but it also um, really just drew funding to those places that directly employed a peace officer. And we wanted to make sure that it was distributed more widely um, and to provide the most amount of local control to communities as possible. So every city and um, you know community knows what they need. For instance, I just spoke with my city manager yesterday. They are interested in buying an ambulance. Um, so these are things that people um, can decide amongst their city councils. I'm not worried about law enforcement advocating for what they want. Um, I, I think that they, uh, those relationships are already built into our city councils. Um, I would just point out to members that uh, among Senator Gustafson's um, materials are the, um, uh, the, the charts uh, showing the aid for every city based on the, the, um, um, the description of the formula that she gave and, and also um, uh, the counties and the, uh, on another sheet, on the counties and the, and the tribal um, governments. Uh, Senator Gustafson, is it usual or unusual for uh, tribal, tribal com governments to come into a formula like this? I mean, do they get county program aid? Do they get uh, uh, LGA or any other kind of specific, uh, specific aid? Or is this the first time that this has been uh, attempted like this? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I might have to lean on uh, council or um, research to maybe uh, shed some light on some of the background of past uh, distributions of aid, but we knew that it was important to this bill that they be represented and that they receive direct funding, um, so that it was a priority for us in this bill to make sure that tribal nations were represented. The, um, uh, in the Senate bill, at the governor's recommendation, uh, in terms of aid to uh, tribal uh, governments, there's a one time $44 million, $4 million um, for, for, each, for each tribe, it just total divided by the number of tribes without, without uh, any uh, reference to um, population or, um, <clears throat> or uh, level of poverty. Um, the, um, the House has I was going to ask, I see he's away from the table here. Um, the House has a, a tribal aid um, component. Um, oh, uh, Representative Davids, um, we're, we're talking about the aid to the public safety aid and then what's otherwise in the, in the House and the Senate. And the House has a um, provision for um, tribal Tribal aid? Are you familiar with that? Uh, could you talk about that at all? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I, I am aware, but I believe it was help me. Out. <laughs> I'm here with all my friends, as you can see, um, and I believe it was seventy-five million dollars. But I think it has something to do with housing, also. And I think that's a different. Just, aid. just a sec. Just a sec. I think there's a tribal aid um, that is fifty million a year. No, Madam Chair, the House has $75 million, no strings attached. Um, and divided how? Uh, we're thinking population, but we'll need to verify that, Madam Chair, when we have research here. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to track people down. I apologize. It's okay. 
We did. We needed to respect. I, mean, I just think they think I can handle it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. We, you know, we wanted to respect Senator uh, Gustafson's uh, schedule, and and we yes. decided to go on. I think the, 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 actually, the point I'm trying to get to here is that we, we are um, growing in the recognition of uh, um, respecting um, uh, the sovereignty of our of our tribes, and to, um, uh, to recognize that they have. Um, uh, they have needs for local go government aid, even though it is for the tribal, the tribal governments, and they're all in counties, and uh, they're going to get um, aid based on that level of government as well. But I, I think it's, um, uh, um, I, I don't know what the correct amounts are, or anything, but I think it's about time, and um, and I was really pleased to see this, this, uh, this distribution and. Uh, <clears throat> we may not um, have the same in our individual bills, but um, it's an important first step, so I just wanted to make sure we're aware of that. And go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Senator Gustafson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I believe that that's, you know, that is the bill. There isn't much more to it. It is pretty straightforward in that if you can see the runs, um, every city is represented on here. Um, and um, I, I know, for example, of Adnes Heights, where I live, we do not have a police department. We contract with the Ramsey County Sheriff's Department, so that money could be used to, towards the um, contract. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, White Bear Lake has a police department, but um, part of the funding that they would get would go towards a new ambulance, which they desperately need. So um, there are lots of ways that public safety can be represented in our suburbs, in our cities, and in our rural uh, communities as well. And we really believe that local control is um, most important here. Um, Senator uh, Gustafson, I note in your uh, materials you've handed out that you have um, uh, an amendment to um, the bill. And um, are we to understand that the proposal that's actually coming to us is um, uh, the um, the public safety article in the Senate um, requesting that it be amended with this language. Yes, Madam Chair, that's, that is correct. Would you just go over that one more time? I'm sorry, what? Would you just go over what this amendment is? Absolutely. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this amendment um, would put the um, bill in the shape necessary for the proposal that I've presented here today. So um, this amendment both lists the eligible uses and the non-eligible uses, as well as the new formula that would be used to allocate the funds. Okay. Um, are there questions or comments for... Uh, Senator Gustafson about this proposal. Well, once again, thank you very much. Uh, we have made it available to um, all the members of the conference. And uh, when we uh, get to the point where we're making motions about um, uh, funds and raising revenues and dispersing them, uh, <coughs> the Senate will be supporting um, our position. And, and as amended by your suggestion in whatever the number is, the, the, uh, the A52 amendment. Okay. Thank you very much for coming and visiting us. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, com committee. Um, we're next going to move to the um, uh, the proposal we've talked about before more than once, the minerals article, and um, we had and that was a, a motion of ours this morning because it was um, uh, it was uh, identical in both bills, but there is an amendment, and uh, we. Um, we're going to uh, propose uh, uh, dealing with it, and I'm going to call on Senator um, Housechild to um, 
we gave a he gave the overview of it, and we've all uh, seen it uh, more than once. Um, but Senator House Child, if you would like to explain the amendment. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> this amendment would make a tran a very very small transfer in the Taconite Homestead. Um, fund that we are allocating some money towards. So it would move $100,000 from one project to another. And the second part is a technical amendment that would allow the IRRRB to bond for school projects, which was the original intent of the article. This just provides some clarifying technical language for the agency at their request. Are there any um, questions about the amendment? Um, Senator House Child, do you have a motion? I move that the conference committee adopt the provisions related to the minerals found in House Article 6, Sections 1 through 11, and Senate Article 6, Section 11, as amended by the A56 Amendment. Is there any um, um, discussion on that? Um, all of these motions are going to be roll called. The, the um, uh, clerk will take the, take the roll. Senator Rest. Yes. Senator Klein. Yes. Senator Weber. Yes. Senator Dibble. Yes. Senator Hoschild. Yes. Representative Gomez. Representative Liz Lagarde. Representative Lee. Representative Ag Agbaje. Representative Davids. Yes. <clears throat> there are five yeses and uh, on the part of the Senate and one on the part of the uh, the House. We need three we, members voting uh, from um, both chambers, and so the motion the motion uh, the motion fails. Um, the uh, next um, thing that we're going to take up is uh, the tax increment financing. Um, um, provisions we've heard about them two or three times, gone over 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 them in detail, and we now have motions to um, regarding them. Um, you know, I I regret that the um, the house is not here, but um, our um, uh, very very strong directive from both the um, uh, house speaker and the. Senate Majority Leader is that we are here to get our work done, and um, and they expect results. And the Senate and uh, is um, prepared to do that, act on them, and um, and we appreciate the presence uh, and participation of Representative Davids. So we're going to proceed with motions on the TIF um, article. Um, we are uh, doing it like we did. Uh, one other article, which is um, uh, section by section. Senator Klein. Madam Chair, I move that the conference committee adopt the provision relating to Hopkins TIF found in Senate Article 7, Section 2 for inclusion in the tax conference committee report. Um, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Uh, uh, the um, uh, motion fails um, because we don't have um, uh, three members on the part of the of the house. I'm going to announce that as an observation, um, but I'm also going to have um, we're going to do another roll call um, uh, on each of these uh, motions. So. 
Uh, would you please, Ms. Blood, would you please, I was trying to do two things at once here. Shouldn't have done that. Would you please um, take the roll on that motion? Senator Rest. Yes. Senator Klein. Yes. Senator Weber. Yes. Senator Dibble. Yes. Senator Hauschild. Yes. Representative Gomez. Representative Liz Lagarde. Representative Lee. Representative Agbaje. Representative Davids. Uh, members, we have the same result. There are um, five yeses on the part of the Senate, one on the part of the um, House, and the motion uh, motion fails because we don't have uh, three uh, votes uh, for the motion on uh, part of the House. Senator um, Klein. Madam Chair, I move that the Conference Committee adopt the provision relating to Bloomington TIF found in Senate Article 7, Section 3 for inclusion in the Tax Conference Committee report. Discussion on that motion? There will be a roll call if you would call the roll. Senator Rest. Yes. Senator Klein. Yes. Senator Weber. Yes. Senator Dibble. Yes. Senator Hoschild. Yes. Representative Gomez. Representative Liz Lagarde. Representative Lee. Representative Agbaje. Pardon. Representative Davids. Yes. Thank you. Same result. Five yes from the Senate, uh, one from the uh, House, and the motion fails. Senator Klein. Madam Chair, I move that the Conference Committee adopt the provision relating to St. Paul TIF found in House Article 8, Sections 15 and 16 for inclusion in the Tax Conference Committee report. Discussion? Seeing none, there's a roll call. Uh, please take the roll. Senator Rest. Yes. Senator Klein. Yes. Senator Weber. Yes. Senator Dibble. Yes. Senator Hauschild. Yes. Representative Gomez. <laughs> Representative Liz Lagarde. Representative Lee. Representative Agbaje. Representative Davids. Yes. Um, same result. Five yeses from the Senate, one from the House, and the, uh, uh, the motion fails um, uh, because um, we don't have a majority vote in the, in the House. Senator Klein. Madam Chair, I move that the Conference Committee adopt the provision relating to Savage TIF found in House Article 8, Section 17 for inclusion in the Tax Conference Committee report. Discussion? Um, uh, roll call. Senator Rest. Yes. Senator Klein. Yes. Senator Weber. Yes. Senator Dibble. Yes. Senator Hoschild. Yes. Representative Gomez. Representative Liz Lagarde. Representative Lee. Representative Agbaje. Representative Davids. Yes. Same result, five yeses from the Senate, one from the House, and the motion fails. Madam Chair, I move that the Commerce Committee adopt the provision relating to Chatfield TIF found in Senate Article 7, Section 9, for inclusion in the Tax Conference Committee report. Any questions? The, uh, please take the roll. Senator Rest. Yes. Senator Klein. Yes. Senator Weber. Yes. Senator Double. Yes. Senator Hoschild. Yes. Representative Gomez. Representative Liz Lagarde. Representative Lee, Representative Agbaje, Representative Davids. Yes. Uh, thank you. Same result. Five and one, and the motion uh, fails for lack of a majority in the in the House. 
Senator Klein. Madam Chair, I move that the conference committee adopt the provision relating to Duluth TIF, found in Senate Article 7, Section 7, for inclusion in the tax conference committee report. Discussion? Seeing none, uh, there will be a roll call. Please take the roll. Senator Rust. Yes. Senator Klein. Yes. Senator Weber. Yes. Senator Double. Yes. Senator Hochschild. Yes. Representative Gomez. Representative Liz Lagarde. Representative Lee. Representative Ogbaje. Representative Davis. Yes. Um, same result, uh, five, one, and four absent. And the motion fails. Madam Chair, I move that the Commerce Committee adopt the provision relating to Duluth TIF found in section Senate Article 7, Section 10, for inclusion in the Tax Conference Committee report. Discussion, comment, seeing none, please take the roll. Senator Rust. Yes. Senator yes, Klein. Please. Yes. Senator Weber. Yes. Senator Dibble. Senator Dibble. Yes. yes. Senator Hochschild. Yes. <clears throat> Representative Gomez. Representative Liz Lagarde. Representative Lee. Representative Agbaje. Representative Davids. Yes. Um, same result, five yeses from the Senate. Uh, one from the House, and the motion uh, fails due to the absentees. Is that it? Madam Chair, I move that the Conference Committee adopt the provision relating to Ramsey TIF, found in Senate Article 7, Section 8, for inclusion in the Tax Conference Committee report. Discussion? Seeing none, please take the roll. Senator Rust. Yes. Senator Klein. Yes. Senator Weber. Yes. Senator Dibble. Yes. Senator Hochschild. Yes. Representative Gomez, Representative Liz Lagarde, Representative Lee, Representative Agbaje, Representative Davids. Yes. Same result, five, one, four absent. Madam the motion Chair. fails. Madam Chair, I move that the conference committee adopt a provision relating to Fridley TIF found in section, Senate Article 7, Section 11 for inclusion in the tax conference committee report. The, um, please take the roll. Senator Rust. Yes. Senator Klein. Yes. Senator Weber. Yes. Senator Double. Yes. Senator Hochschild. Yes. Representative Gomez. Representative Liz Lagarde. Representative Lee. Representative Agbaje. Representative Davids. Yes. Same result, five, one, four absent. Motion fails. Madam Chair, I move that the conference committee adopt the provision relating to Plymouth TIF found in Senate Article 7, Section 12 for inclusion in the tax conference committee report. Discussion, seeing none, please take the roll. Senator Rust. Yes. Senator Klein. Yes. Senator Weber. Yes. Senator Double. Yes. Senator Hochschild. Yes. <coughs> Representative Gomez, Representative Liz Lagarde, Representative Lee, Representative Agbaje, Representative Davids. Yes. Uh, same result, five yeses on the part of the Senate, one on the part of the House, and four absent. The motion fails. Madam Chair, I move that the Commerce Committee adopt the provision relating to Shakopee TIF found in Senate Article 7, Section 13, for inclusion in the Tax Conference Committee report. Um, uh, discussion? Seeing none, please take the roll. Senator Rust. Yes. Senator Klein. Yes. Senator Weber. Yes. Senator Dibble. Yes. Senator Hochschild. Yes. <clears throat> Representative Gomez. Representative Liz Lagarde. Representative Lee. Representative Agbaje. Representative <clears throat> Davids. Same result, five yeses 
on the part of the Senate, one on the part of the House, four absentees. The motion fails. Madam Chair, I am pleased to move that the conference committee adopt the provision relating to West St. Paul TIF found in Senate Article 7, Section 14 for inclusion in the Tax Conference Committee report. Indeed. Uh, discussions? Seeing none, uh, please take the roll. Senator Rest? Yes. Senator Klein? Yes. Senator Weber? Yes. Senator Double? Yes. Senator Hochschild? Yes. Representative Gomez? Representative Liz Lagarde? Representative Lee? Representative Agbaje, Representative Davids. Yes. Um, same result, five yeses from the Senate, one from the House, four absentees, uh, and the motion fails. Madam Chair, I move that the Conference Committee adopt the provision relating to Woodbury TIF found in House Article 8, Section 29 for inclusion in the Tax Conference Committee report. Discussion, seeing none, please take the roll. Senator Rest. Yes. Senator Klein. Yes. Senator Weber? Yes. Senator Dibble? Yes. Senator Hochschild? Yes. Representative Gomez? Representative Liz Lagarde? Representative Lee? Representative Akbaje? Representative Davids? Yes. There being five yeses on the part of the Senate, one on the part of the House, uh, and four absentees, and the motion fails. Um, that concludes um, actions on, oh, I'm sorry, there's one more. Madam Chair, I move the Conference Committee adopt the provision relating to general law definition change of small city found in Senate Article 7, Section 1 for inclusion in the Tax Conference Committee report. Uh, <clears throat> any discussion? Seeing none, please take the roll. Senator Rest. Yes. Senator Klein. Yes. Senator Weber. Yes. Senator Dibble. Yes. Senator Hochschild? Yes. Representative Gomez? Representative Liz Lagarde? Representative Lee? Representative Akbaje? Representative Davids? Yes. There being five yes votes on the part of the Senate, one on the part of the House, four absentees on the part of the House, and the motion fails. And that's it. Okay. Um, we also indicated that we would have um, a motion um, on the Senate position that in our offer earlier on the uh, local taxes. Senator uh, Dibble. Um, Madam Chair, I move uh, from the provisions listed on the Senate offer document entitled Senate Offer Local Special Taxes dated May 12, 2023. Uh, to be adopted for inclusion in the 2023 Omnibus Tax Conference Committee report. The modifications to the Duluth Food and Beverage Tax and Duluth Lodging Tax and the modification to the Cook County Lodging Tax and removal of authority for the Admissions and Recreation Tax in House Article 9, Sections 1 through 3 for inclusion, in, like I said, in the Tax Omnibus Tax Conference Committee report. Any uh, discussion or, or further information needed about that provision? or the provisions that were uh, uh, read out regarding uh, Duluth. Uh, seeing none, uh, we'll have another roll call, please. Senator Rust. Yes. Senator Klein. Yes. Senator Weber. Yes. Senator Dibble. Yes. Senator Hochschild. Yes. Representative Gomez. Representative Liz Lagarde. Representative Lee, Representative Agbaje, <coughs> Representative Davids. Yes. There being uh, five yeses on the part of the Senate, one on the part of the House, four absentees on the part of the House, and the motion um, does not prevail. Senator Dibble. Madam Chair, I move that the following provision listed in the Senate offer document entitled Senate Offer Local Special Taxes dated May 12, 2023, be adopted for inclusion in the 2023 Omnibus Conference Committee report. The Lake of the Woods Lodging Tax and Wyzetta Food and Beverage Tax in Senate Article 10, Sections 2 and 3. Discussion or questions? Um, I'm seeing none. Please take the roll. 
Senator Rust? Yes. Senator Klein? Yes. Senator Dibble? Yes. Senator Weber? Yes. Senator Hochschild? Yes. Representative Gomez? Representative Liz Lagarde? Representative Lee? Representative Ogbaje? Representative Davids? Yes. There being five yeses on the part of the Senate, one on the part of the House, four absentees on the part of the House, the motion does not uh, does not prevail. Uh, when we were uh, presenting um, this morning our offer on the uh, sales and use tax exemptions, uh, we indicated that there have been with with the sales uh, exemptions. Uh, three different approaches. One, the governor's, that um, was one time, but um, also included some um, uh, retroactivity. I think the number there was something like 250 million. Um, the provisions that had uh, that were in a Senate bill from Senator Aaron May Quaid that uh, she had worked with a number of representatives from the local governments about having an, an ongoing, um, kind of like an exemption pool, um, ongoing uh, every single year there would be an um, opportunity um, uh, uh, for that. And uh, in the House, in the Senate, we had um, all of the, um, I guess what's listed here for the construction materials exemptions for the cities or, lo or local governments uh, some 25 uh, proposals, and uh, we indicated that since there was this difference in approach on the part of the House, that um, there might be um, uh, there might be uh, once they adopted their sales tax approach exemption approach, there might uh, there might be. Um, cities that would then think that they were covered by this overall approach and did not have an individual bill or ask for an individual bill to be uh, uh, and then to be discussed uh, given the way in which the um, the house was presenting its its alternatives and indicated that if there were provisions in, uh, or proposals or cities that would have been included under the house House general law um, that we would certainly be willing to take them into uh, and named in the um, uh, in the Senate um, uh, in the Senate uh, ascertaining what the actual cost um, for that would be for uh, each of those exemptions and then adjust the amounts accordingly uh, and we would uh, propose those to. Um, be added to the um, the uh, <coughs> added to the target. Um, they asked for, uh, although they're included in this in the general bill, uh, side by side um, uh, spreadsheet. Um, they asked for them to be on a separate spreadsheet, and uh, we provided that to them. They're at their places over there, and Senator. Representative Davids, I believe you did get this there. Um, so uh, they now have um, uh, all the information they need in the same place. And then um, besides the local government ones, we have um, other sales and use tax um, exemptions. And um, all of them are included in this category, had to be um, uh, uh, in a category of its own, like the baby products or something like that, and they were, um, uh, and we included them from um, um, both sides. So um, they have that information. They informed us um, uh, that uh, uh, they had a um, counter offer. Um, I don't know. What it was about, and they haven't shared it with us. Um, but we um, uh, we are going to wait for that, and we will um, 
recess again until 3 p.m. Madam Chair. Uh, Representative uh, Davids. Thank you, Madam Chair. Before we recess, if we could maybe just put on our radar screen, uh, we have baby product sales exemption that's in here. Uh, if there's someone we could possibly consider school supply sales tax holiday in August, uh, which would be House File 2719, uh, we, from our research, that would comply with the streamlined sales tax. So just some thought on that, maybe. Uh, uh, Representative Davids, I'm, I'm extremely opposed to sales tax holidays for any number of reasons. Um, they, we have certainly made them acceptable in uh, streamlined uh, tax uh, in streamlined states um, that amendment was offered on the uh, the floor of the Senate and it was uh, defeated so the Senate has a position against it and I can um, uh, a very crude explanation uh, or an unsophisticated explanation is what has happened uh, in any number of other occasions is um, Something is offered, let's say, um, a tablet of paper for a dollar most of the time during the year. And in Minnesota, the tax on that would be seven cents and it would be a dollar seven. Um, when sales tax holidays come in, all of a sudden the price of the product changes uh, to a dollar seven. And um, no tax, is, um, no tax is, is collected, but um, the, uh, the the consumer still pays a um, dollar seven, and um, uh, so it's it's not a. Uh, uh, it doesn't mean that every retailer jacks up their prices during a sales tax holiday or not, but that certainly um, uh, is a trend, and it does not benefit uh, does not benefit the uh, does not benefit the consumer. And thank you for that, uh, Madam Chair. It's probably not that good of an idea anyways. Um, <laughs> sometimes I just think, I feel like it's David's versus Goliath. But uh, uh, we know how that ended, though. I mean, you know, it's far <laughs> So thank you, Madam Chair, for that explanation. Sure. Um, it, 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 uh, sales tax holidays are um, an attractive, um, uh, attractive notion. Um, and again, in, in some areas, that there may be, well be a, um, uh, a benefit to uh, consumers, but uh, uh, in, in general, they're, they're also, you know, they have to reprogram everything to account for them and, and uh, you know, remote sales, um, how are they are included again, and, um, uh, and just like uh, actually we're going to have to do, and I'm, I'm assuming at some point we will certainly accept these sales and use tax exemptions, but we've heard from um, the retailers, for example, in this new category of the baby products, um, asking for, and I'm certainly going to, I don't think it's on this, this, this is not the offer, the other paper, piece of paper was the offer, um, we're going to we're going to recommend a delayed effective date so that they can uh, get everything uh, rejiggered and and not um, um, and not um, not having any not having confusion and uncertainty on the part of uh, retailers in our local communities when they're um, putting their programs into their their uh, um, um, cash registers and. And, and so forth. So um, I think that's uh, uh, a very legitimate uh, request, and uh, that certainly will be my, my recommendation. I, I don't know. Um, anybody here from the retailers have just a question about that? I guess not. But I don't, I don't know uh, how long uh, they they uh, believe that the effective date needs to be delayed in order to um, allow that. Ms. Bears, uh, what happened? Do you know what we generally, when a new category comes up um, that is uh, uh, of this, I mean, it's not a whole lot of money, but it is a lot of items. <laughs> 
uh, what the uh, what generally the department uh, advises on, on effective date? Uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee, for the record, my name is Joanna Bears. I'm the legislative director for the Department of Revenue. So usually we ask for at least 60 days because they need to update their software in order to process the exemption so it's no longer considered taxable. Okay, so 60, um, 60 days. So that would be at, at least a two months delay uh, into the next fiscal year, I suppose. Anyway, so... Um, so they have that information, and now we will um, await um, uh, an offer, counter offer. Um, that's how it was. I don't know what's, what it's a counter offer to, um, but we are very interested in getting that, and uh, we will uh, uh, come back from recess at at uh, three o'clock. And if we don't have their counter offer by that time, we'll move on to other. Um, uh, to other uh, items that we can make sure are um, uh, are in front of us for discussion um, among ourselves and um, including Representative Davids. So, yes. Okay, I understand from Mr. Bergman that we have um, we have an offer from the House. Uh, we, I don't have it in my hands, of course, but he'll print it off for us. Uh, and the Senate conferees uh, will go and um, discuss it. And at 3 o'clock, we will have a response. So the uh, Tax Conference Committee is uh, in recess until 3 p.m. It's been posted um, on online. I'm calling um, back into order from our recess an offer from the House. I'm uh, disappointed that they're not here in person um, uh, once again, <laughs> but um, uh, it's just life, I guess. Um, we of uh, the offer that we believe we got. Um, it's not clear whether. Um, uh, two separate parts of it are one offer, and they described it as a package, or whether it's in it, even in itself are two separate things. One is the, um, and it's posted online by the way. Uh, one is the um, the conformity article in the um, uh, in the uh, uh, that you can find on our spreadsheet. They list it as, on this sheet, a conformity article. Uh, and um, so we're just not sure about taking things separately or it's an all or nothing or whatever. Um, but we, we will go through it, and I hope that I'm explaining it um, as we uh, understand it and as they intended. The um, uh, the conformity article is uh, identical in um, in both um, the House and the Senate, and um, um, we are assured by the department that that um, estimate is still uh, uh, good. Is that correct? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Yes. Okay. So this this article this article uh, from the conformity this. <laughs> Numbers from the uh, conformity article are, are accurate, and we we support that. Um, we would also support the um, amendment uh, that is 
titled A77, and all that does is update the bill to the latest um, uh, Internal Revenue Code language. Uh, to, be, to make it, the goal of doing that is making it, as I understand it, um, the reason doing that is to make the effective date of the bill as close to um, the um, Internal Revenue Code's latest update itself, and that is, um, we don't believe they've done anything that would change uh, since March, but it is a kind of a routine tradition to make that as close to the date that we passed, uh, we passed the bill, God willing, I'm beginning to think. But um, so that's what that is, and we support that. Um, the um, and and if you if you saw this sheet, um, uh, it's article it's article two, and it includes this A seventy seven amendment, and that is the House position, um, and we we support that. The uh, the second one, the Northwest. Minnesota Multi-County HRA, the Levy Authority, that was Senator Johnson's bill in the in the Senate, and they are the House was suggesting that we take that language. I think it's probably the same; it's identical. Uh, so that's that's uh, just simply a courtesy. Um, we did not have the Duluth Tourism Tax Extension in the in the Senate bill. But we have read over the language and have no objection to that, so we would um, certainly support that. Um, the um, the Cook County lodging tax extension is the same, and uh, and they uh, they um, are again as a courtesy um, uh, proposing the Senate Article Ten, Section One, uh, same thing. Uh, well, no, I guess it's not. On the Lake of the Woods County Lodging Tax Authorization, that is uh, a Senate provision. There's no comparable uh, provision in the House. The, um, we do object to the Virginia debt limit exception because um, they make it effective with the passage of the bill and do not include uh, what we believe is necessary. Um, action for the city council to um, accept it or approve it or um, what would be the term there, uh, Mr. Sylvia? Madam Chair, just would require action by the Virginia City Council to essentially accept this proposal, the special law proposal, as okay. the legislature grants. So it, it's a confirmation of, um, of what the proposal is, and um, that's pretty common that the uh, city councils have to um, acknowledge and confirm that action that was uh, taken as special law. Uh, uh, and we we do not accept that. Uh, we want the confirmation by the, uh, by the local government. And then the next one, we've had a discussion about the, um, uh, the um, population that's, that's used in tribal tax agreements. And there's still some uh, uh, discomfort by those who are affected by the um, uh, by that it, it, it was originally, I think, presented to us as um, uh, kind of codifying. It's it's out of the department's bill, codifying um, current practice. Um, but there's um, kind of going back and forth between um, if if it's uh, um, if it it makes any. Any interested parties um, uncomfortable, and we might they're they're suggesting our language, but we're we would um, we would set that aside um, and get um, and get further assurance that um, that that provision is acceptable. And then um, in the tourism improvement districts, there was a lot of conversation among uh, house research and. Um, and Senate Council um, about the um, uh, the definition and the use of business within the uh, tourism districts. Mr. Sylvia, could you explain the, um, uh, 
uh, how the language of the House um, uh, came to be uh, preferable. Madam Chair, members, um, in, in speaking with Mr. Cove from House Research, we determined that the, the original language is introduced and the language that the Senate carried was, was somewhat circular in its definition of business because it would require um, the, the municipality to, to accept the definition of business as is proposed in the municipality. However, um, the businesses or the lodging businesses that are subject to this um, tourism improvement district charge, you know, have to be the, the entity that, that initiates this by, by requesting a petition to the municipality. So without a clear definition of what a business is, it's not clear what businesses would be able to essentially uh, initiate the petition. And, and the House, uh, in their proposal, defines a business as a lodging business as to find in the municipality's ordinance separate and distinct from this authorization, which is much clearer and, and would be the recommendation to, to adopt. Okay, and so um, the, the Senate will um, be supporting um, the, um, the House bill section and, and language there. Um, they also <clears throat> included as their offer um, a working group to discuss the local sales taxes and TIF together. Um, I can't imagine something that is more uh, farther apart, oil on water, than putting those two things together. Um, and it seems to me that those are, uh, they're not to be discussed together, uh, or it doesn't make any sense. Um, and then appointing, um, appointing members to review the minerals article, well, um, we, uh, we adopted that our, <clears throat> those of us who were present adopted the minerals article um, earlier with, um, with the language um, that Senator Housechild had um, with an amendment that is acceptable to um, all of the, um, uh, uh, all, of the <laughs> all of the people who uh, districts uh, that would be affected by by that this the um, so that article with that amendment um, has been agreed to already by uh, Representative Lisleygard and I I can't imagine why we need to appoint them uh, House Child and and Lisleygard to review it when it's identical um, and. Um, uh, and so we we uh, we reject those two things as well. <clears throat> uh, discussing uh, issues um, that are grouped together, like LST or or tax increment, is fine as long as it's done in the light of day and um, and publicly. There will there will be no senators uh, participating in private discussions in that way on those articles because we know what they are, and. Um, um, a good and vigorous public discussion, I think, would be could be very helpful. So um, that is our our response, and uh, just like I did before, I'm going to um, I'm going to state a motion and ask Senator Klein to make it, uh, and then we'll have a roll call. So I would uh, the motion would be the conformity article on the House side with that A77 amendment. Um, there, uh, Northwest Minnesota Multi-County HRA Levy Authority, the Duluth Tourism Tax Extensions, the Cook County Lodging Tax Extension, the Lake of the Woods, um, the debt limit that is the Senate language, um, uh, no position whatsoever on the population in the tribal tax agreements, and the tourism improvement districts that are um, the houses and um, um, uh, there'd be no motion that includes um, a working group discussion or appointing members to review uh, minerals articles. Senator Klein, is that your motion? It is, Madam Chair. Um, so we have that in front of us. Anybody else have anything to add or comment? Uh, then we'll take, um, uh, we'll take a roll call vote on that, Ms. Blood. Senator Rust. Yes. 
Senator Klein. Yes. Senator Weber. No. Senator Dibble. Yes. Senator Hochschild. Yes. Representative Gomez. Representative Liz Lagarde. Representative Lee. Representative Agbaje. Representative Davids. No. Um, there being um, four ayes on the Senate side, one no, and uh, one no on the House side, and um, and four minute four members uh, absent. Um, and so we, um, the motion does not um, prevail. And we are still um, uh, working and uh, we'll have other things to, uh, to bring up. Um, and so we're gonna say, let's say it's four, almost 4.30 now. Um, we're going to, let's see, when is your cards are coming in? Okay. Um, things are pretty uh, intense on the Senate floor. Um, Senator Dibble also has a con another conference committee. So we are, well, once again, are going to um, recess um, until either 6 p.m. or the call of the chair, uh, depending on what's going on um, around us. And uh, so with that, we are in recess.